Ladies and gentlemen, it's happening. Everyone said the cart game would be coming next. Everyone said the official sequel was the impossible lair and that would be it for the lizard and the bat. But who was right? Everyone called me nuts. I always said there'd be an official 3D platforming sequel for ukulele someday. And you all called me crazy. Well, who's crazy now? Roll the intro. What's up YouTube, AmazingGamer111 here to tell you about the new ukulele game that was announced recently and claims to be an official 3D platforming sequel to the original first game in 2017. Which I guess that means for the time being the impossible layer isn't canon. I know some people may be a bit upset by that, but frankly, I don't care. Cry about it. This video is also going to be me talking about what I hope will be in the sequel and how it can improve on everything that was presented in the first game. But before all that, let's read through the article announcing what the sequel has to say. The following information comes from NintendoEverything.com. A sequel to Ukulele is in development, developer of Platonic has confirmed. That news comes as part of an announcement the company made earlier this week revealing that it has sold a minority stake to Tencent. Ukulele technically already has a sequel in the form of Ukulele and the Impossible Layer. However, this new project will be a proper follow-up to the 2017 original as another 3D platformer. Yes! Ukulele and the Impossible Lair is 2D. Speaking about Tencent's involvement with Platonic, Managing Director Gavin Price, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, told Games Industry, I was surprised because I didn't expect them to be interested in Platonic. It turned out that they had a department of genres, including a 3D platform department so we had to formalise our future content plan a bit. And we wanted to have an aspiration goal as well, which was to make ukulele an IP that could appear on a major fast food chain's kids' meal box. Okay, that's a little odd choice of phrasing there, but let's keep reading. They liked the studio and what we put out before, and they thought they could help us achieve those goals. And it just continued from there. Naturally, everyone wanted to do this, so we just threw it into the solicitors and waited for them to tell me it was done. With Tencent having a stake in quite a lot of companies, there are lots of opportunities to be meeting and finding out more about each other. There's a huge level of support there, but ultimately, this is about more games from us. We want to do more games more often. Price told Game Industry that Platonic was already making three projects before getting involved with Tencent. However, they won't all be 3D platformers. Wow, that's <laughs> that's the really exciting stuff there. That's that's really good. That little bit at the end there actually reminds me of a certain thing going on between the Banjo and Yuka fandoms right now, trying to find out what this secret project from Platonic beginning with the letter B could possibly be. A GBA game, I think, is what they're making behind closed doors, but nothing new from Banjo has been confirmed yet, so we'll just have to wait a little longer on those details. However, from this statement, I can tell everyone that worked on the first game plans to also fix a lot of the issues the first game had, such as cutscenes locking up, or enemies getting ready to attack you mid cutscene and knocking a piece of health off of you when you transition back to live play. I personally think the greatest part about all of this ukulele sequel stuff is that ever since the first game dropped, they've really been pushing to make other games other than Banjo spin-offs. Look at games like Victory Heat Rally, Little Alligator Game, or more recently, the Demon Turf franchise. It's something I really want to congratulate Platonic on. So if you guys are Platonic Games, if by some crazy chance you're seeing this video, my hat's off to you. You've been doing so incredibly well, and I hope you'll continue to do more like this in the future. So now with all the details we have so far on the sequel out of the way, let's talk about what I want to see in it! First off, smaller worlds as the game starts out and allow them to get bigger later on. The main problem I have jumping into the first level of Ukulele was being so incredibly lost. Even without the expansions, which we'll talk about later, 
I had almost no idea where to go. Anybody when first booting up the game and entering Tribal Stack Tropics could go in any direction and easily find it hard to backtrack to the entrance. I'm not saying that having infinite places to go is a bad thing, but I don't know, maybe do what Mario Odyssey did and have a menu showing how many pages you need to collect in order to continue to the next world. Say you need 15 pages maximum before you leave, the menu gives you clues as to where they are, and you set off to where you think the clues point towards, a la Bendy and Ink Machine style. Next, I want the sequel to be a continuation of the first game's story, like Banjo-Tooie, and not a replacement of the original story, like Super Mario Galaxy 2, as well as have a more complex storyline as well. Maybe after Capital B failed to dominate the market in the first game, Dr. Quack reports him to the board, and they become the big bad guys of the sequel. This was actually foreshadowed, twice in the first game. First when Capital B phones them up early in the game, saying he's not looking forward to them appearing in future titles, and after you beat him at the end when Quack says he should report Capital B for his poor performance. Revealing Capital B is more powerless than we thought. This could also be a great opportunity for them to crank up the self-awareness factor quite a lot, as Platonic Games has said before that all their games apparently share a universe together. So have the head leaders of Vile, who are seen as the board in Ukulele, become the Thanos of the universe. That would be incredible! If we do a sequel, we go nuts with it. Just imagine, imagine if Yuka and BPM had a crossover. That would be insane. Also, I came up with the idea of Dr. Puzz branching out and making more inventions that don't transform you, but provide you with new abilities to get to areas otherwise unreachable. By that, I mean her inventions no longer transform you, but by using quills, you can buy inventions from her to use like a grow and shrink ray that you can use on yourself, and also on enemies for a short time, maybe even a handheld warp device, so you can fast travel to places you've been in the world that you unlock by hitting checkpoints in certain areas. For example, you hit a checkpoint at the entrance of the world, and hit another near a waterfall. Activate the warp device, select the waterfall checkpoint, boom, teleport, and you're there. I'm just spitballing ideas here, but I think these could work really well and provide a new variety of gameplay. Now, expansions. Fix them or ditch them. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it, that's all I gotta say, fix them or ditch them, they're, they're pretty baffling to say the least. Because I tell you, I think I speak for a lot of the ukulele fans out there. When we'd finish what we could of normal versions of worlds and had to expand them, the first thing we think is, oh boy. I'm gonna be in there for a while. With the first world, you should really not have gone overboard like you did. Same thing with World 2. They are the first two worlds of the game and are easily the biggest in the game. Start off the expansions, opening up a possibility for double the current pages you can get in the pre-expanded world. So pre-expanded, 10 pages are all that's available. Expand it, now there's 10 more, get looking. Although on the second time around, I wouldn't want it to be too easy. So, for the expanded worlds, don't give the players hints in the menus. This will present more of a challenge for them, giving them a better sense of exploration, pushing them to explore every new corner of the level, and will make them want to expand more worlds later on. Next is multiplayer, but in the main story, split screen style. One person can control Yuka, the other controls Laylee. My idea for this concept is that there are certain collectibles that can only be collected by certain characters. Sometimes Yuka will have to leave Laylee behind for a moment while he turns invisible to go and grab a pagey guarded by security cameras, or Laylee will have to leave Yuka behind so she can crawl into a small space that Yuka is too big to fit in and grab another pagey. There could be all sorts of examples for this, and in the end, it's a great way to get more than one player into the experience. And as soon as the second player is done using one of the characters and drops out, Yuka or Laylee will automatically come back to one another within a few seconds. Simple. Or maybe just have an ability to switch between the two characters at any time. GTA style. Another thing are the worlds themselves. Random empty spaces here and there don't feel so good to see. Every inch of platformer games, even today, are built to have every inch feel like it's supposed to be part of the world it exists in. The first game didn't do too much of a good job at this. So in the sequel, I would like to see this tweaked a little more. Add some more flair to make the smaller areas feel like they're supposed to be there. Don't just throw them in, work them in. Use it as part of the world and not just another tool to keep us exploring for a few more seconds. 
Maybe have a cave at the bottom of a mountain blocked by a small enemy base, and the only way you can get inside is by going up and around the mountain and pushing over a boulder to destroy the enemy base below. When the boulder reaches the bottom, it smashes along with the building into many pieces, then a pagey rises from the rubble, and you can now enter the cave that was blocked off from before. Where do I come up with these incredible ideas? Lastly, I want this game to have an ongoing story, a beginning, a middle, and an end, which is something I don't believe the first game had. It had every single piece of potential to do it, but it was ultimately discarded and the ending didn't really feel that satisfying at all. But now with the sequel coming, we can build upon Capital B and Dr. Quack being trapped in a book. We can build upon these anonymous figures known as the board as the head leaders of Vile. We can build upon the crossover potential Platonic Games has going on. We can build upon making the sequel to Ukulele the best it could possibly be. And that, my friends, is what I would like to see in the Ukulele sequel. So tell me, what were your thoughts on my hopes for the sequel? Do you agree with me? Do you like the idea of the sequel at all? Do you think I need some sleep and some therapy after this extremely tiring script reading? Let me know in the comments down below! Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. <sighs> Man, this felt like something Arlo would make.